Brent, and uh, this is the Estacada Parks and Recreation Commission meeting, July 27th, 2022. We'll start with the roll call, please. Uh, Commissioner Sherman? Here. Uh, Commissioner Bellamo? Here. Commissioner Stanton? Here. Commissioner Shebrill? Here. And Chair Dodrell? Here. Thank you. So the only one item on the consent agenda, the minutes of our last meeting on June 29th. Is there a motion to accept those minutes as they've been given to us? I'll make a motion to approve last month's minutes. Is there a second? Second. He beat you to it. Sorry, Kalika. <laughs> all right, all in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Aye. Thank you, Stephen. Okay, uh, on our agenda, we have citizen concerns and comments. There's a number of people here. If you'd like to make any comments this evening, now is the chance. You're here to comment or just listen at this point. Yeah, this is the only chance on the agenda, but um, I can tell you right now, we're not making any decisions on the Campanella Park tonight, and we'll comment about that. So, all right, just tell us your name and um, share with us what you'd like. And forward, so would it be helpful if I was to go around the Campanella Estates and actually get something like from the community members on who would like to see that splash pad, who would like to see the pickleball courts in there just to give you guys a visual of exactly what is going on in Campanella. You're certainly welcome to do that. Um, we are well aware that there's a number of people that are concerned about the splash pad as well as the other developments. So I don't know that that's going to necessarily carry any more weight. Okay. Um, this is the first thing on our agenda. So you will hear in just a moment what the pause is at the moment. Okay. And um, then you can kind of take it from there. All right. Oh, okay, that sounds good. And then, you know, just listening to other community members, like there's not really any from people outside of the development. I'm not hearing like we have to have this in Campanella. They just want what they've been promised. So it doesn't matter to, and this is just reading a lot of stuff on Facebook and whatnot and talking to people. It's not that they have to have it in their dead set on Campanella. They just want to see the splash pad that they were promised that they were going to get. Um, and a lot of the talk and uh, feedback I'm hearing is all that, that it is again, back to the Wade Creek where people feel like they're, it's uh, they're more welcome and it's just a better setting for them. Um, and so that's that's what I've been hearing a lot of, so. Great, thank you, Tracy. Anybody else? Okay, we'll move on to commission business. We have four items and um, some of them may not take too much time. First one is the Campanella Park discussion. Um, we've had this on our agenda for a number of meetings now. And um, I gave a report to the city council at their last meeting concerning um, where we were at and a report that I gave to the city council concerning we're kind of on a pause and maybe I can just read one statement from this report. Um, as the chairman, I've made a request to the city council. And this is how it's stated in what they received. It seems like it's beyond the scope of the park and rec committee to find the answers to these questions. And the questions that I'm referring to there are questions like, um, why wasn't the splash pad put in Wade Creek Park? If those reasons were valid then, are they different now? Um, has there been any sufficient actual study that that would be a good appropriate place for the splash pad in Wade Creek Park? Uh, input from the library director, 
because it will certainly impact her and uh, what she's trying to do in that area, particularly in the summertime. And then just uh, understanding, is, is that a, a good place right next to a skate park? Um, so those are questions that we all have opinions on, but we haven't had anybody actually tell us that would be a good place for the skate park or for the splash pad. So I also put in here uh, that we, we request that the city staff find answers or lay them to us. It may be necessary to contract with some sort of park expert. So we have solid, well substantial answers that we can base our decision on. I don't think there's anybody on this commission that's opposed to moving the splash pad. We just don't want to say it's not going here and we'll put it there without some sort of substantial reasons that it can fit there well and it's actually a good decision. So you've heard this before, let me just say it again. Um, somebody told the city council at some point that Wade Creek Park was not a good place for the splash pad at some point in the past. For me to just ignore that advice to the city council, and I think for the city council to ignore that is just kind of silly. Why did they say no then? Is it different now? So we would just like to have those answers. Another thing that I think needs to be considered that it's not even in this report because I actually thought of it later is, as I understand how park SDCs are used, system development charges that everybody in Campanella Estates paid when you built your homes, um, that is for the expansion of services. So it would be appropriate to spend SDCs to expand services and put these features in Campanella Park because it's a new expanding park. My question is, can SDCs be used to replace an existing feature in a park that already exists? Because frankly, it doesn't expand services, it just changes it. So again, that's a question that's above my pay grade and that I think the city council needs to have an answer for because this development in Campanella State Park will be funded through SDCs primarily. Maybe there'll be some other money that are going into it. So this report has been given to the city council and to the Parks and Rec Committee. And so I'm just suggesting we pause any decision-making on this till we have some solid answers as the next best place for that splash pad. So with that, I don't know if any of the Park and Rec Committee have any comments you'd like to make regarding the report or regarding any further thinking you've had on this subject. I'll just pause and let you chime in as you want to. What was the city council's response to this? Because it is part of the master plan, like, like as the overall park, maybe more is my question, because that is... That is part of the master, the park master plan was doing that park there. Like what was their responses? Um, when I was at the city council meeting last night, the city manager had this report and she was going to forward it on to the city council. So I don't know how any of them have responded to okay. that at this point. Um, we're, we are aware that uh, city master plans change. Um, the one that we're working under, and. And again, some of this maybe doesn't make sense to the, if you're not kind of in the system. The park master plan drives our decisions because somebody before us put together a park master plan and said, this is what should happen for parks in Estacada. So we can't just say, we're gonna disregard that and do something else. And I would hope that if we did that, the city council would say, well, you, you, can't, you can't do that because we paid money to have a park master plan to guide the parks and rec commission. So again, to take the splash pad out of Campanella parks is a diversion or a, um, it's different than what the park master plan says. 
Now, we can do that, and the city council can allow that. I just want to make sure it's a valid reason to do it. So, no, so to those who are here and those even listening, nobody's disregarding your concerns. And I stated in your report that they're valid concerns. And I am really sorry that you were told that there was, you were never told there was going to be a park in there. I would be deeply frustrated and angry if I was you, not at the city. <laughs> We didn't do that, but to those who told you that's just gonna be a green space. From the very beginning of the development of Campanella Estates, that was to be a park. Everybody knew that to develop that, that community. And so I'm sorry that it's put you in a really difficult situation. Anybody else want to comment? We had a discussion about like, uh... Some of the things that we've discussed about the splash pad itself be relevant in this agenda item, or should we save that for a little later? No, no you're if you just want to make some comments on the splash pad or anything you've been thinking about this, um, as a chair, I'm just saying we're not going to make any decisions on what's next because we need some information from city staff. But Stephen, if you'd right. like to make some comments, that's great. Yeah, because I, I think there are a, a, a few things that could there's a, there's a sort of level of detail that is missing from this because we've just been saying splash pad and that and that's it and that can mean a lot of things to a lot of people uh, i think it's worth diving in and just at least doing the experiment of like well what would the splash pad actually look like uh where would it go how big would it actually be um and then you know we, we also have all of this uh survey info about neighborhood splash pads that's just you know, it's overwhelmingly positive and I, th I think just getting kind of getting into the details of uh, what we would what we would build and how it has impacted other communities um would at least present uh you know our a perspective of like why this is something that uh, you know would be beneficial to the community and if people there, still look at all that and say, no, I, 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 I don't, I still don't want this thing there. There, at least, it's at least a, it's a, it's a decision that's made using a common set of data between the residents there and the Parks and Recreation. Right, right now, there's, there's probably very different visions of what that splash pad's going to look like on each side. Yeah, Stephen, I think that's a great insight, um, and so I think once we get some impact input back from city staff about other options for a splash pad, then we can start talking about the details. What would it look like? Uh, obviously, if we put it in Wade Creek Park, there are there is space limitations there because it's surrounded by other features. Not that it's a small area, but it is limited. Um, yeah, and, and, and then the, the challenge the challenge, even with this process, as you know, Stephen, we're, we're simply at this point saying these are the features we are recommending in a park, and then it's turned over to the engineers and saying, given the space you have, here's what it could look like. And often in that process, we say, no, that's too big, or no, that's too small, and, and we kind of change it even from there. So... That lack of detail is probably both frustrating and at the same time, I don't, I don't know how much we can do about it at this point because there's no details beside what features are going to go in the park. Does that make sense? Yeah, but uh, yeah, because I know like some of the they just said some of the concerns that have come in about it. Um, we we do have some some thoughts around those that would uh, address those, like you know. Um, you know, one of the things is just how does it impact the neighborhood and generally the every you know we have every other neighborhood in Oregon that has one of these really appreciates it but the other the, one of the other concerns was you know having a thing that is only on during the summer and that's that's valid and so you know some of the things we're talking about of like having a you know where having a, uh, a splash pad where if it's turned off it still functions as as a play feature you know so it's it, uh, basically like 
this is a feature that essentially has like a, a splash a splash pad node. Yeah. Like the one in a Happy Valley. I don't think it is explicitly like that, but um, I was just noticing that even when it's turned off, when my, my kids go and jump around on the rocks and still play on it, and they probably don't even like notice that. That's so like, oh yeah, this is the place where we usually come in the summer, and right. you know. And so I, I think there's as long as if we go into this with sort of like a dual purpose thing in mind, like something that does function year round, um, then I, I think that there's that is one of the valid concerns I think would be addressed. Yeah, and I think even. A uh, better use of city money uh, to put a feature in that can be used more often uh, than just yeah. something in the summer. Yes. Exactly. Right. That's that's my that's my two cents on that. Use again. Thanks, Stephen. Anybody else? Uh, yeah, I was just gonna say I I think it just makes sense just before you know instead of like talking details, just wait for. Uh, just for the survey people to come back just to make sure it's like because they may tell us moving in is not an option to wait great right because you know who knows why they again i think i'm more in your camp we should wait to see what they come back with whether it's even an option to move it or not and then we can just go from there yeah i would hate for us to make a decision to not put it um, in campanella thinking we can put it somewhere else. And then we're kind of back to square one with, again, a substantial number of people saying, where's our splash pad? Yeah, exactly. All right. Anything else? All right. I guess I would like to say to those of you here, um, we're not trying to be sneaky, okay? So this report that I gave to the city council can be available to you as well. So we just want all the facts before we make any more decisions. And when this comes back on our agenda again, it will be a public notice. So you're welcome to come back and speak to it at that point as well, okay? Um, you're welcome to stay, you're welcome to leave. Thank you very much. Yep. Go ahead, okay. go ahead. this whole thing this whole thing is being discussed and i know one of the changes that was made just in the brief time that we've been on this subject is we put in more parking because that was one of the concerns that we heard from people is everybody's going to be parked all over our streets and we can't get through so parking space uh, i think if you look at the last version there was where the dog park was going to be and is now gone, we put some parking down there as well. So it, there were actually four additional parking areas. So regardless of whatever's put in, and I'll say it's one hand, if none of none of this goes in, the additional parking will still be available. That's a really good question. I don't know that I can answer it. If it just remains a big green space, um, I guess we'd have to consider, do we need more parking there or not? And again, uh, your guys' input on that, this, this next version that becomes presented, I'm sure your input would be really important at that point. Okay, thank you. I do wonder what, when she just said that, because you talked about if anything else does go in. So isn't it, these are weird today, isn't it required since we have the younger kid playground there, since that is there already, don't we have to have the older kid playground? Required I, I thought by that, like, or I guess it's in our master plan, right? I, there, there's somewhere that if we have, we have to have them for like both age groups. And so that's why like the developer did the first little one. And then when we, like in the design, that's why then the other one was bigger. So even if we didn't do all of the other things, although I guess if it's in the master plan, the master plan could change. 
again, the master just, plan can change it if there's valid reasons that it needs to be different. Okay. And I, I think maybe having an, an additional playground area for older kids might have come when our committee said, what, would, what all do we want? What do we want in parks? Okay. And one of those things was different types of play structures. Okay. I knew that was one of the, I just yeah. can't remember where everything comes. It's so yeah. long in I between know it's when been we a do long things. process. Okay. All right, we're going to move on. All Thank right. you again, folks, for being here. The adventure tour update. I know, Stephen, this is your brainchild, and we're just always anxious to hear any updates and anything you would like us to do or help. Uh, yeah, actually, I have, I have, I slowly made progress on it, and I would have a little something that I have. I would have like a little thing to show right now if I wasn't driving. But uh, I had a pause on it for a couple of weeks while I wrap up work. I'm taking five weeks off of work. Uh, I'm starting with the beginning of August. And uh, part of that time off is going to involve making, uh, I've got several days that are like blocked out for uh, making headway on this. Great. You're taking five weeks off work? Man, that's cool. I am. <laughs> All right. We're going to go to Europe for a couple weeks, so in there. Yeah. So, and so putting a big buffer in around it. We appreciate you working on this kind of behind the scenes. And um, yeah, we'll look forward to a visual and how that could work and how it might just be a part of parks in general and the community in general, getting people out and about and exploring the city. That would be great. Thank you, Stephen. Concert in the park. Uh, so we've had two uh, pretty well attended. Um, last one was Ray Gordon, who's an amazing blues singer. Uh, There's a great, a better turnout for that one than I think um, the first one we had. So the next one is August 3rd. It's uh, dance. Help me, Taryn. Dance hall days. Yeah, you can go online and they have traveled quite a bit and do some really good music. So looking forward to that. Uh, Rob Gaskell, who's been leading the charge on this, um, recommended that we move it back one hour from seven to nine instead of six to eight. Uh, as you guys know, that stage is facing directly yeah. west and it's kind of brutal on those artists. So they thought if they just put it back one hour, it would be a little bit easier so we'll hope that we can get the word out for that. I know his publicity has already gone out for six to eight, but I talked with Taryn today and we can change things on Facebook and website and every place else we can. Um, spread the word. If you talk to anybody at seven o'clock, should be a good group. Um, we've had some problems getting the groups there that we're gonna sell hot dogs and hamburgers. Hopefully one of those groups will be here for this next concert. They didn't come last time either. They didn't come last time either, so. Um, I know one of one of the sponsors was uh, was sick the very first concert. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we'll we'll stay on that. Um, I think that's all. Any questions on that? Anybody? All right. This next one we need to spend a little bit of time on the trick or trot planning. It's um, end of July, so if we can make some decisions tonight on what we want this to look like, this will be our second annual trick or trot um and if we just have the same great weather i think it'll be another great success <laughs> yeah, but it was awesome. phenomenal last year so i steven i think it was you that posed the idea that do we want to add an actual little short adult run to this um that's open for discussion Sometimes more is better, sometimes less is more sort of thing. So, Stephen, I don't know if you want to comment on that. I think that was your idea last week, possibly, or last month. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. I'm actually, I'm okay, I'm okay with it either way. I, I mean, we do have the, um, if we do the spring one again, maybe, maybe that's just our, our, our cadence is that we, we do like a, we, we do a spring one for, for grownups and, um, and then, uh, as you were talking about it, my sense in the back of the car, just like shouting how much he loves it. Uh, 
I love the trick or treat. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I'm. If it uh, if it makes if it makes sense, like if we want to just go all in on like um, blowing this out more as a kids event, that could be fun. Or if we want to kind of like split the effort to turn this into a fun, half fundraiser, half uh, kids fun run, then uh, I'm, I'm good. I'm good either way. I, I see advantages to, to both. Can you catch me up to what, yes. what, what it actually is? <laughs> so last year we did a kids a kids fun run called the Trick or Trot, mm -hmm. and they wore costumes, and it was at Campanella, and it was just I don't know how familiar you are with it, but just the the paved loop that goes around like where the little playground is and mm -hmm. loops around without crossing the street, um, one loop around. And um, we gave out goodie bags that had like glow sticks and candy and they all wore their costumes and they got a medal. And um, that's, that's about the, the library was there, I think. They yep, the library yeah. came over, um, which was actually because they lost their power. So this time we'll make sure that they actually will like set it up so that they come um, for like a planned time. Um, but it was really, we had a really good turnout. Um, we had, I think, a hundred and so I think I bought two hundred medals, and you said we had seventy-seven left, right? So, yeah, we yes. had a good turnout. This was on Halloween. Uh, it was locked, uh, close to Halloween. Got it. Yeah, like it was the, the day before, I yeah. think. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Saturday before Halloween. Um, yeah, it was a beautiful day, sunny and warm, and beautiful. It was very cute. <laughs> Yeah, I, I do think making it not uh, keeping the total event time to about what we did was probably part of the reason why we had such a good turnout because it's like a it's a pretty easy commitment for most people. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so unless anybody has any other strong feelings, I'll I'll just recommend we just again keep it this year at the trick or trot and put our running experts uh, on the spring event as that comes around again. Uh, so we have a consensus on that. Just do the fun run again for the kids. Yeah, I liked it that way. You with us, Kalika? Yeah, Anything? I think so. And, and I think the spring one will, will uh, go ahead. Uh, I think the spring one, like we had kind of a small turnout, but we also, we didn't get anything in the newsletter and we had a lot less time to promote it than we did with the check or trot. So I think right. if we, if it gets the same attention, um, it'll probably do pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. I got behind the ball on that and didn't get that planning ahead of time. So, so on this uh, particular event, um, I'm actually going to be out of town. So we'll have to divide up responsibilities. So everybody knows what they're doing. It's obviously not a big lift. Um, so my presence isn't obviously essential to that. Just want to nail down the date for sure. Let's see if we can nail down the date and the time and maybe make some assignments. So it's Saturday, October 29th or Sunday, October 30th. Uh, we did the spring run on a Sunday. Um, I don't know that it, I'll just defer to you guys. We want to keep it on that Saturday. That would be the 29th. That sound workable? I can do that. Did we? What did we do last year for the trick or treat? Was that Saturday or Sunday? So was, we did it on Saturday. We did it on Saturday because it was at the same time as the soccer. Kaliko, weren't you at a soccer thing? Yeah, I'm on the soccer board also, and I've I've got a kid who plays as well as refs, and so I I didn't participate at all in it last year because I wasn't available, and I'm not sure what the schedule will be or that that's the very last soccer game of the season and I have to collect equipment so yeah I remember that was it was hard for me to like I got there but it was right after yeah. it was like a rough turnaround so I'm not sure it'll depend if there's a home game or an away game and how involved I am there because the soccer board doesn't have enough people and so we all have multiple roles this year to uh, make it happen so if it's a Saturday there's a good chance I won't be available Maybe. We could, do you know, even without knowing like 
the whole schedule since Haley's in that upper bracket now? Like what are their usual times? Just so I know for, for me, like what's usually the last game time? Do you have a ballpark? Well, it's usually for the younger ones, it's usually early afternoon. I mean, by it, it kind of depends if like who's who the coach is, if they have to accommodate a younger kid and an older kid, then they'll have later like mid afternoon games. So they could be Okay. Cause I was thinking like Aubrey's usually like nine, 10, 11. And then I think like the third, fourth graders are like 12, one, two. Yeah. Okay. We'll so I'm, I'm, I'm open. If we're going to go with the Saturday, is it better to do it later? You think? For me. It's um, better for me later or Sunday I'd be able to do. Okay. If Saturday is a better day, then I'll help out beforehand or some, or just not be there. Well, I don't know that Saturday is necessarily better. Um, I don't think Sunday was a hindrance on the spring event. I, I would recommend something after, after noon mm -hmm. for those that do have yeah. church commitments. Um, I don't know. Somebody make a motion. What about give us a consensus or something? What if we if we did it on Saturday? What if we did it at like three o'clock? Saturday at three, October 29th at three. I think before we did it at one. Yeah. I think and it doing was, it at three would help. I know some of our neighbors, they have like four-year-olds and they wanted to go and then they ended up taking a nap and then they didn't get up in time. And I feel like three might be enough later to accommodate some of the nap taking little people. Three is better for nap time. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't know about <laughs> nap time, but I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure you're right. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I think, that, I think that works well too. I think there's some, something about if we could have a little consistency with the, at least the days. So it's, it makes it easy to be like the trick or trot happens Saturday before Halloween, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. October. 29, 3 p.m. Staff has that, so we can get that on record. Um, the banners and that sort of thing we did last year weren't dated, so we can reuse those. Um, and then we would just need to be getting some more medals if we're doing the yeah. same type of medals to use up what we have. And then the bags and all that stuff. And Gina, you did all did of that, that last year. I don't know yeah. if you want to. I can do it again. Okay. I'm just not buying glow sticks. I'm <laughs> buying glow sticks. I'm buying thick ones that don't crack. That was my, we did some candy. There was bubbles, stamps, glow, like, you know, like a okay. damper glow sticks. And I'll look. Um, and now that it's earlier, there were some things that I wanted to get that were sold out because we were doing it so close to the buying, so close to Halloween. So, um, and I'm sure those same medals are still available. So I will work on medals. I know at the bags where I could probably even get the same because there's some bags still in there too. Yeah. Um, if we desire, I'll go ahead and reach out to the library and see if they want to have a little booth up just for either promo or just some sort of activity that day as well. Yeah, do we have a contact also for, because um, Orchid Health came to the spring run if they want to come again to this one i do have I'll, i can contact orchid because they had like the little wheel and yeah. prizes and things um oh and then jerry tenbush's daughter oh yeah with the princess the princesses said they wanted to come back again yeah. and they were really helpful older daughters that dressed like princesses I and helped hand out medals and take pictures and stuff. Nice. It was really cool. Um, All right, so we have a direction at this point. We have the date at the time, um, contacts that need to be made. Next um, month, we can hammer out more details. Anything else need to be decided at this point? Do last time i did an online um not a google doc like a google a uh, thing form. that they registered i can't think of the word right now i can form. do that uh, again form. That form. yes a google form thank you that was yeah. the word i couldn't think of um 
but I can edit my one from before so that that's ready. And then we can figure out a flyer for the, what would that be? Like for the September water bill? So that would be when we want to do it. Because it yeah. comes on like the, the first week of October. Yeah, so if you sent it to us by the mid-September, and then they should receive it the first week of October. Or if you want it earlier, you could do September water bill. Hey, Kalika, is that something you could take on is just the creation of a flyer that could go in the city water bills? Because I know you did the art in the park thing. You did that so well. Sure, as long as I have all the information, I can do that. Okay. Um, do you guys remember, did we put, I was trying to look on my phone and see, did we put an age limit? Like we said kids on there and it wasn't like we turned anyone away. Um, I was gonna look a different way and see if I could find it. Does anybody remember what way, what age we said on there? I don't remember. There was some really young ones, but there was mm -hmm. not any older a yeah. lot of older kids that came. Did we say 12 and under? I, I think, know. I feel like we did. I think there was something. Um, so just keep those same. Oh, here. Whatever we did last Here's time. Here's the flyer. Saturday, October 30th. Trick or track. Costume neighborhood dash for kids. Face painting free registration at 2 p.m. Race begin. Oh, we did it at 3 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that, you guys. I think it's that we came there early to set up. That's why it was hard. Recommended for kids age 12 and under. That's what we put last time. We do already have, I mean, if we still have the flyer from last year, we can just change it to say October 29th. We'd need to take off the face painting part. And it says medals for the first 50 finishers, which we took away and gave to everybody. So we could say like medals and goodie bags for all or something. I can see if I have, well, Stephen, do you have it like saved on your computer? This I found on Facebook. I do. I can, okay. Yeah, no, I, I have the first file. There we go. Stephen's got the original. Then we can just change it that way. Um, and then we can post on Facebook for the online signing up of it. And I can also get it to the school district the school district. So maybe Kalika doesn't have an assignment. So we're just going to use last year's flyer and Stephen, you can change the date and update anything and get it to the city. Yep, yeah, no problem. Okay. Um, do we want to keep it at three o'clock or do you think that it should be lumped to like four o'clock if you have to be there early for setup or do you think it'll be fine with three? I think this is more for like Gina than anyone. Four, four yeah. is kind of late for that time of year. Um, three yeah. is fine. I, don't, I definitely don't mind going out early on that day. Three is fine. I think we just went earlier last year so I could help. And I think if we have enough people there helping and I do this stuff ahead of, like I feel bad if I'm not helping, but if I do this stuff ahead of time, I think I'll feel okay. okay. And Eddie was helping. Three it is. Three o'clock. Steven, you'll be the race guy when we get there. You'll do the start and everything. Yep. You did that really well last time. Nobody got crushed in the start. <laughs> right. That was good. I, I think that was more luck than anything. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll try to try to keep it organized, safe. All right. Anything else related to that that we need to talk about at this point? We have a plan. All right, that was the last item on the agenda. Is there anything anybody else would like to mention or bring up at this point? I had one thing. Yes, um, Kalika. Just for the National Night Out, I had talked with Deborah about it and I thought that I was gonna be able to, to go and, and table or do something, um, but soccer has gotten in the way again and I have to help with skills camp. So I didn't forward any information because no one else was available. Um, at least that was my understanding from the last meeting. So we're not doing anything at National Night Out. Yes, we did uh, help sponsor the face painter that's gonna be there, but as far as having a booth, yeah. yeah. That's all, just, just confirming that I, 
I thought that maybe I was going to do something, but I'm not. So we're not doing anything officially. Okay. Because you're being soccer mom. I I the skills clinic, and because we're short board members, I'm helping with registration and other things all night. So it's three nights this year instead of two. Yeah, it used to be four. four so. Oh, did it? Okay. Anything else? Anybody wants to bring up? All right. It's good to have the mayor here. Thank you, Sean, for sitting in. Appreciate it. All right. We'll adjourn the meeting. Thank you.